And may I have Pat Flint lead us in the pledge. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Announcements of action taken in closed session. E1, Government Code Section 54957, Public Employee Discipline, Dismissal, Release, Information Received. I just want to make sure I have these in order. So next is the approval of the agenda. Do I have any amendments to the agenda or um, changes? If there are none, can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Agenda is approved as is. Moving on to association reports. May I have WSTA report? Um, Mr. Busey, I, I, it's a new school year, so I, I know we're in the middle of transition, so whoever would like to do the WSTA report <laughs> and whoever would like to support the WSTA report. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Mike Buse. I am the brand spanking new president of the Washington <laughs> you look West brand Sacramento brand. Teachers Association. Sorry. Um, I don't have much to report at this time. We're anxious to start a new school year and looking forward to our new teacher orientation uh, tomorrow. So uh, please join us. It should, I'm sure a good time will be had by all and looking forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Chocolate. Food provided by Chandos Tacos. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Much appreciated, Mr. Buse. Um, do I have anybody from CSA to do the CSA report? And I don't think we got received an email this time around, so I'm going to move on. And we're going to move on to public comment. We have a few, but before that, I have a wonderful statement to read. I know, Pat, you haven't heard it in a while, so... Perhaps you miss it. <laughs> At this time, members of the public may address the board on the topics of our board agenda, in addition to the topics that are under the jurisdiction of the board and are not in the agenda. Although the board, by law, may not take action at this meeting, the board may limit the total time for public input on any topic to 20 minutes unless it chooses to waive the item limit for a particular item. Individual speakers may be limited to three minutes to comment on any topic. Public comments consisting of individual charges, complaints, or derogatory remarks about any district employee are request to be submitted in writing to the administration in accordance with the district's complaint procedure. We do recognize that for a lot of people com commenting before the board and the audience and the people watching at home on their computer screens, it's a nerve wracking experience. So to try to make that as easy as possible, we do ask that there not be any applause or booing or catcalling or other demonstrations to maintain a civil discourse here in the chambers. The board respects the rights of members of the public to speak to us regarding matters on the agenda and other matters within the jurisdiction of the board. However, it is important for members of the public to recognize that comments regarding students other than the speaker's own children made during a public board meeting may be legally actionable as a violation of student privacy. Both state and federal law prohibit the board and others from discussing confidential student information in open session. To this end, be advised that if you reference a student's name other than your own student, you will be out of order and your comments may not be protected by the privileges that protect public speech. You could be found liable for such comments in legal proceedings. Furthermore, it is important for the public to understand that negative derogatory comments made against district employees or others, even those made in a public board meeting, may be actionable civil defamation. As such, the board reminds the public that the district has existing board policy that allows the public to lodge and complain against a district employee. This policy provides a comprehensive procedure for reviewing and responding to public complaints. This process provides a more thorough opportunity to be heard than is allowed under the open meeting law that governs this meeting. Ms. Pat Flint, you are first on deck.
Good evening. Feel free to lower the podium. <laughs> Um, I was happy to see that we have several new hires for the school year. Uh, however, I still want to remind you that I am not pleased with the way that um, personnel issues were handled the last school year. Um, some employees were let go because you had deficit spending, yet at every meeting you have new hires, at every meeting you have new job descriptions, and some of those that were let go should have been offered those positions without having to go through an interview and not receive the job. How would you feel if you had the qualifications and you had the expertise um, and you've had good, out, you know, not maybe outstanding uh, re reviews, but you've had good reviews, and yet you are ones that are being let go put into lower paying positions, or just not acknowledged at all. I don't want to see this happen again. I do not want to see another school year like we've just completed. Let's start the school year off right. Let's hope that it goes well. Let's hope that you guys are up there for the right reason, and that is our children, and that you are not up there supporting people because of the race, the color of their skin, as you have stated in other uh, meetings on tape, and because they're a minority in another person's world. You've all said that, every one of you. Maybe Preston, I don't think I heard it from you. But I, we can't go on like that. It has to be qualifications that are based on what students need and how this district needs to be operated. Thank you. Ms. Danny Langford. Good evening. Feel free to raise the raise podium. Now. <laughs> so I am going to ask again that you would record, whether it's a tape recording. I know nobody believes in cassettes anymore other than maybe myself. Bless you. Um, but I feel that the special meetings, committee meetings, workshops, those need to be recorded. They used to always be recorded so the public could hear things that you're saying and doing um, if they can't attend. With that said, the two by two um, on Monday, I couldn't attend, but my husband was there. It, I find it to be disrespectful for the city to start without either board member there. And I realize you guys are running late, and it's, I get that it's a fine line with the Brown Act, but let's not cross it. Why would they start a meeting without the board members there? The superintendent isn't in the count for the two by two. It's two board members, two council members. While I'm not opposed, as some of you have stated I am or think I am, I'm not opposed to partnering with the city. We've had joint use with the city for as long as I've been around with my kids, but I am concerned about West Mar Oaks, Fallbrook Campus. This is the handout from the two by two. I am concerned about the city with the park, number one, I, I heard it was said um, that the park could be left open overnight. We have to be good neighbors as the district or you'll have an uproar in that community. I literally, and I don't lie like some of you have accused me of, I don't stretch the truth. I'm contacted almost daily, either by phone calls or messages concerned about what's going on with the Fallbrook campus. My kids were there when we went from 350 students to 500 and it was a nightmare for that community. Now you're gonna possibly put 400 more to make that a 900 student campus and yet the school district has not reached out to those neighbors because they're calling me and asking me what's the deal is. That's not being a good neighbor. Furthermore, having bathrooms on that, and this is, I mean, Pat and I, everybody thinks that we are one person. We both think individually. She's for the bathrooms. Frankly, I'm kind of against it, especially if those bathrooms or that campus park part is opened up all night long Who's going to monitor? Who's going to make sure they're safe? Are we going to have extra yard duties? Because I've been at meetings where the superintendent says we don't have the budget for other yard duties. Who's going to take care of these things? 
That's a concern to me. Great if we get a grant, but we have to maintain that. And first and foremost, that needs to be a school site. Park second, school first. And I'm sure you guys know that. And I'm probably up here wasting my three minutes because you don't look at me or you roll your eyes or you make comments under your breath. But please listen to us. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Don Stoffer. Good evening. Good evening. I wanted to add something that uh, Mike could have, have could have added to his report, but I'll, I'll mention it instead. Um, once again, this has been a, a good year for Washington Unified Teachers. Uh, two of our teachers uh, were awarded Institute for Teaching grants, and we, we just received notice of that. Uh, Andrew Tate and Alan Herman, both of them at the high school, both separate grants. Uh, Andrew Tate received the, the largest amount that the, this grant uh, can offer, which is tw just about $20,000. And so we're really excited. Uh, Washington Unified teachers have been doing really well in this, these grant uh, proposals over the last few years. These are competitive grants, and we've been well represented, over represented uh, in, in the from in considering it on a statewide basis. So once again, our teachers are doing well. We're doing innovative things in the classroom, and they are, these things are being recognized by uh, the California Teachers Association. Additionally, I don't know if, I don't remember if I mentioned this in the springtime, but a student group at, at the high school received a grant from the Guy DeRosa Safety in Schools uh, Grant Committee, which is also CTA, and this is for the Gender Health Club, which is one of the few gender health clubs anywhere, and really excited to see these kids uh, put something together. Again, a competitive grant, and they were awarded uh, uh, funds to, to get the, the com committee and their club off the ground this year, so just excited to uh, talk about the grants that our uh, union dues um, provide coming back into our communities and schools. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to our action items um, on the consent agenda. So do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Consent agenda is approved. Um, there is no public hearing at this meeting, so we're, we are going to move on to information and discussion items. And one informational budget update in lieu of a formal 45-day revise. Mr. Mount Medinas. Good evening, trustees, colleagues, and community members. Hope everybody's doing well this evening. So in lieu of a 45-day revise, uh, I'm giving a summary under information of the actual net effects this year of the legislation that was passed uh, after our formal budget adoption uh, and uh, actually as of tonight. It's all up to date. So at the June 27th Board of Education meeting, uh, we adopted our spending plan with a positive certification uh, for three years, of course. Uh, and we advised that there might be some changes between that date and uh, when the rest of the legislation was passed for the legislative season. Uh, and so there's just some quick updates here. So first of all, the COLA did remain the same. There was some speculation that it would go up. Uh, it did not. It stayed at 3.26%. Uh, so that was correct for budget adoption. The PERS rate, our contribution, the, this is the employer rate contribution, uh, decreased by one02 uh, which resulted in a decrease of our expenses this year projected at 127000 The STRS rate, that's our teacher retirement system contributions as an employer, increased by 0.4, which is an increase in expenses of $145,000. Our mandated block grant uh, had a decrease of $220 projected for the year, and lottery is going up, we project, by about 23000 Slight increase in preschool funding, we project it to be at 32,000. And the most significant increase this year in special education, AB 62, of about 94,000 projected. Of course, all projected based on enrollment at this time. So all of those increases and decreases 
uh, yield a total revenue projected increase of under $150,000, uh, mostly in special education. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean anything until we actually see the program usage and enrollment for special education this year, and perhaps that will yield a lower contribution from the general fund to special education this year. The total increases and decreases net to two-tenths of 1%. Uh, not material, but typically we look for something over 5% before we do a formal uh, reevaluation of the budget. Do I have any questions or comments? I have a quick question. Leslie Kirby Gonzalez. Um, can, so you, these are based on enrollment, so the mandated block grant revenue had a minimal um, decrease, so that is based on enrollment? and then special education going up. So does that mean we have fewer students enrolled, but a higher threshold of students who are identified? So it's all, it's, all, it's all based on enrollment projections. And so what we did this past year, since we have to adopt the budget before we actually know how many students we have in October, uh, we actually put a flat enrollment, which means that we assume that every student will come back, mm -hmm. right? And then we look at trends to see how many we anticipate in both TK and K as well as preschool. And so, we are actually in the process. We meet weekly right now, uh, Human Resources, myself, and Ed Services, to look at actual how many students have enrolled. Uh, and then we go through the, the process of warm body counts uh, that first two weeks. And then in mid-October, we do CBEDS, which is our first enrollment certification. That will start truing up our budget. Uh, and then after the first four months, we, of course, do our enrollment and attendance reporting, P1. And all of those things modify the revenues because we only get revenue based on the actual people we have, which is why we do a first interim to adjust the revenues. So it's all adjusted on a weekly and monthly basis until first interim. So these are based on our best guesses at this time. I will also be giving you uh, updated enrollment as well as updated projections. I shared some of those preliminarily with budget adoption last year. We've modified our formulas to, to take some of the feedback and, and or double check it. And so we'll give you a, a much better idea coming up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, but actually before. No. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to quickly go ahead. ask a go quick, ahead. Quick question. So all these numbers are, um, the numbers that were an increase are above what we have per projected for our budget of this year that we've already approved, right? So these are additional cash revenues that are going to go into the general fund. Uh, or relieve the general fund. Or relieve the general Correct. fund. Correct. Correct. So as I've harped on many times before, it could go into maybe a trust account. <laughs> uh, you might imagine, I've already begun researching it. I have worked with, with trust accounts before with CalPERS, and I actually know the manager there, Karen, who's, who, who reached out again to see if the rules have changed. Uh, and what I've been doing is a cash flow analysis uh, going two years back and projecting a couple years forward to see actually how much cash, because cash versus what paper money is very different, and to see how much cash we would be able to put out of our reserves into an investment fund such as that so I can present to the board, or board probably in October. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Do you project any changes in the true up? Uh, you have, you know, a number of returning kids and maybe the first day kids will show up or not show up. Is there a, as you talk with the cabinet, have you guys projected up or down or just uh, that is a smart way to, to budget? I, I'm so we, we did budget flat. Uh, the projections, remember, we started doing in-house this year, yeah. and we projected a very, very moderate increase of only about 20 students district-wide. Uh, at this point, it looks like we're somewhere between flat and that number. Uh, so that's much better than the 300 increase that was projected by our demographer last year that never materialized. So, okay. so we, uh, we feel that we're getting a better handle, and we actually are doing the better job and saving the money by doing it in-house. Excellent. So um, we're not doing a 45 day, but after we do the true up, do you foresee us needing to revise the budget? Nope. Uh, the update will be at first interim uh, after CBEDS, okay. uh, which is when that's scheduled. Uh, CBEDS being the first official attendance that the state will take. Excellent. Any other questions or clarification? Well, thank you so much. My pleasure. Um, before we move on, I forgot that there was an L2 comment from Ms. Pat Flint about a certificate employment on the consent agenda item. Great. Sorry. We apologize. <laughs> I was sleeping on the job. <laughs> I know that you had mentioned it in your, your K comments, but there was also a separate request for the consent agenda of certificated. You could. Okay. You will pass. Okay. 
Yes, certificated. Yes, okay. So we will move back, welcome you back up, I think. Um, I said what I wanted to say. Okay. Yes. Okay, good. For the record, Ms. Pat Flint has said what she wanted to say in earlier in the public comments. Um, so, and to update on the district-wide facilities master plan schedule, Mr. Montes. Great. Uh, well, thank you again. And I did tell the board and community, as well as my colleagues, that we'd be coming back once we formalized a schedule. Uh, the school sites have signed up for the days and evenings that they would like to host. Uh, their specific community forums and the handouts for that are on the orange uh, sheet that I'm having and on the back it has little whoops, phone scan codes to take surveys so we have multiple forms of input uh, on the facilities master plan so to remind everybody this is to give the district a road map not just for now not just for the people that are sitting here today but something to adopt as far as priorities that we should be putting our attention on for the next 5, 10, 15, and even 20 years uh, as we not only maintain but try to update our facilities uh, to match the needs of the district. Uh, and so we've developed a schedule of community input meetings for each site, which is what this is. Every site has signed up. There are 16 meetings. Uh, I will be at them all, and of course, everybody's welcome to join. The meetings are divided into two separate sections, one for the school staff and administration at that site to comment and give input uh, on items that they feel that as a working environment that they would like the facilities master plan to address, followed by a brief uh, sort of transition, a half an hour transition, and then it's open to the community. Uh, so that each site can have its community members come in. We're really looking for parents and active community members to come in and give us their input. In addition, we are doing a survey. It's, it's going to be available. It, it, it's, it's already uh, completed. It'll be available uh, on the website. It's actually available already. And uh, we've had it translated into uh, both Russian and Spanish, and it is available completely open-ended so that anybody taking the survey can comment on any facilities, both condition, input, uh, and things that they might like to see or that they would find useful. So it's open-ended so that that survey could take as little as five minutes, and I had to test it so I know it can take as little as five minutes, or you can sit there and write paragraphs and you can take hours on it. So it really is very open-ended, and all of that will be collected together between the live sessions and the survey input, and that'll be the community input section on our facilities master planning. So we're really excited to get started. Um, before we take uh, questions from the board, we have Ms. Pat Flint. Um, you are welcome to the podium. Do, would you like to make a comment on this one? <laughs> okay. Sorry, I didn't turn off my phone. It got me a little upset. Um, I was pleased to be on the committee that chose the architects to do this master plan. I'm excited that it's going to the community um, and that we are doing this master plan because it needs to be... Um, well documented and we need to start finding money on how to fix our schools, build schools, uh, purchase land, that sort of thing. Um, one thing that uh, I want to see is that any committee that is put together not be administrative heavy. These are public schools, public agencies. Whether or not your kids go to school in this district, we all pay for the bonds that um, pay for schools, and everybody in their own community has a right to express their ideas, wants, and needs. Uh, and also, I did not see a public review of the draft plan, and I would like to see that added to the administrative review and um, final draft. So thank you. Okay, Ms. Danny Langford. Just a couple of things. I'm glad to see about the community meetings as well. And I hope that you'll actually listen to the community, not have a preconceived idea or something like what happened with the community, community meetings before all the cuts were made. It was obvious that you guys already had a plan or the administration already had a plan and didn't listen to the community. So please listen to the community because everybody has a stake in it. I think it's great that we have Spanish and Russian. Um, translations, I did see at the community forums that there will be Spanish translation provided, but what about Russian and the other 
um, languages that we have. Those parents and families need to be involved as well. So is there something we could do for that? And also, I have to bring it up, you're going to have the presentation of the facilities master plan, the final thing for the Board of Education and the public, December 12th, the week before Christmas. Seriously? That makes it look to the community like you really don't care or want their input or want their involvement. And trust me, again, people are calling me daily. So please look at that and maybe change it to a different time. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Mount Benitez, would you mind coming back up just for a board question? Trustee Kirby Gonzalez, you look like you have a question. And then Trustee Alcala, following. And then Vice President Pizzotti, third. Okay, thank you. I'm excited for this work. Um, it looks like the community, um, or the, sorry, I forget the name of this. Let me look it up with all of our, um, that the meetings on the facility workshops are about an hour and a half. And so I imagine that's not drop-in. It's like a formal time. Okay. Um, because when I was first looking at these times, I'm thinking of our community forums we've done. And... Um, there, our principal cafes are often earlier in the day because they were finding that's when families come. I know that that means you don't get everyone and there's hindrances to that, but I've been to some school sites where a community forum has almost no one there, but earlier in the day, the principal cafe was full. And so I'm wondering, um, I see these dates are set and they're here real quick, and if they are an hour and a half, it would have to be, you know, seven. 30 a.m. to 9 a.m., but I'm wondering if there's been any conversation with sites on um, if any of these were a morning meeting, like a principal cafe type meeting, or at least if that option was in here since all of them um, are evening. And I know that they're site specific versus kind of bouncing around to them, but it, I think that that opportunity would um, be good. So I'm wondering if that conversation's happened um, or if you see that as possible. Uh, we actually originally had these sessions last spring, and the input from the principals was they wanted to wait till the beginning of this school year. Okay. Uh, and then we had actual multiple dates that folks could sign up for ask, after asking them what would be best, and people signed up for their own dates. We did not assign dates. Okay. So we eliminated all the ones that no one signed up for, uh, but these were all selected by site administration. Um, with whatever conversation they had with their their staff to pick dates. Okay. Uh, so it wasn't a directive process. It was, hey, choose one that works best for you. Um, after we already moved it to the fall, uh, now the progression um, to get it done by December is because being the, perhaps I'm fulfilling the stereotype of the goal-driven business person, uh, that was the goal date that we had last year was this calendar year and so even though I was asked by site administration to wait until uh, school started again uh, the deadline hasn't changed and so I'm trying to get it done and I've been pushing our, our partner really hard to do so that's actually the reason that we came up also with the opportunity for a survey that was not included in their original scope we are not being charged more for that it was our way to say well what about people that can't come getting as much input as they might like uh, so that's the reason that we came up with that as another route to participate uh, site principals because it's specific to their schools are going to be working uh, ed services with their meetings are going to emphasize the the importance um, and when staff and, and families have input on their site, mm -hmm. uh, it tends to get a little bit more attention than maybe something that's not that we're abstract, mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes when it's a district wide or a, or a theoretical concept, people aren't as interested as when it's in their backyard. So we're, we're pretty hopeful uh, for okay. the process. Um, so my suggestion would be um, to add to really um, to add a little bit more on this paper that's going out to families that really says exactly kind of what the purpose is, maybe a quick overview of what the meeting will look like. This is a workshop on your site plan, whatever it might look like, and then the outcome of it. So they understand very clearly because I know um, they might need to arrange childcare, whatever they need to do, and their time is valuable. So if it had that, then I think they'd look at this and, and maybe see a more pressing need to be there versus I could see it. Um, getting lost in the shuffle, and we've seen that before. Mm -hmm. okay. We will provide childcare as well. Oh, great. 
Fabulous. Trusty. So that will be on the flyer. <laughs> Good. Trustee Alcala is next. Okay. Um, you actually answered the question I had about the December 12th date. So I'm just going to um, uh, answer, actually um, respond somewhat to a comment that was made um, about the different languages. Um, I know when I attended a meeting at West Oaks, we had parents that spoke different languages, and they had parents there that were willing to do the translating. So maybe if we put a call out there, um, you know, to see if a parent would volunteer maybe to do some translating in, in Russian, um, it, you know, it sort of really brings them into, mm -hmm. um, you know, the whole process and and they buy into it. So I think that's really important when we get parents to do that. Thank you. Um, we do have Russian translation available. We haven't been advertising it as much. One of the things that surprised us with our demographics is our Russian home speaking population has dropped below 4% hmm. uh, in enrollment. And so uh, we're actually getting less of that presence and Farsi is growing, but it hasn't gone over 5%. That's what yet. I was going to so, mention. So we're actually seeing that fluctuation in real time and trying to figure out how to respond to it with, with translation services. We do have employees that we pay uh, to do translation for community events. And so uh, Spanish is, is a must still. Uh, and we're trying to see, depending upon the school and talking to the principals, which ones might like us to have employees there to translate for the other communities as well. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Vice President Pizzotti. Yeah, so when I was looking over these, um, you know, sites and dates, you're talking specifically about school sites that are currently there. What about potential school sites and what's <coughs> needed? Um, you know, since you're talking about your 5, 10, 15, 20-year plan, mm -hmm. you know, what about property? What about you know, as the city expands, how are five, 10, 15 years? Yeah, plan, exactly. Your... What about us? You know, uh, is that inclusive of this? Because what in, in your presentation, you, you, you mentioned, you know, you want to hear what staff has to say and the community has to say about the specific sites that are available right now and we're currently using. We also have to be forward thinking and, and pondering you know, what is our next step um, as the city grows and as we grow. So I think that's kind of, you know, where my head is at at the moment, you know, is that going to be inclusive into the master plan? And the other thing is that I think, I remember there was a presentation by some parents earlier about um, adding a performing arts thing, so. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that there was a lot of, you know, a lot of parents out there that are enthusiastic about participating in this. Yes. So we, we do have some general questions about expansion. Um, expansion's a really interesting topic that I've done some work on. I, I meet with developers now fairly frequently. Uh, and large expansion right now, which has been concentrated in the South in the past, 15 years has actually slowed significantly. The expansion that we're seeing right now is actually infill development in the north. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, we just uh, approved a deal to get fees up front before they increase next February from a 450 unit going in in the riverbank area. That's the type of expansion that we're seeing and that's actually where we also have room. Uh, but it's tough to ask questions. We've actually had this conversation with the company. It's tough to ask questions about what might be. Mm. Um, versus dealing with reality. Um, we have done some conceptual planning about what schools might look like in the future on some of the property that we own that's in developments in the future. Um, so the questions will be relatively general as far as tested questions about what might you like to see if there's a new school. Um, hmm. But it's tough to predict what might or might not happen. But I, I hear the need for sure. Hmm. The, the Performing Arts Center, yes, I hear about that hmm. frequently. Frequently, I would imagine. I, I do. Yeah. My comment is along the lines of Trustee Akala because we do believe in diversity and a diversity of voice in our communities. And some of our parents who don't aren't uh, strong English um, language learners that may not show up, right? Because all, often these times are predominantly in English. Mm -hmm. So the question, I think that's a really great idea of looking at the parent groups and how to actually utilize them as your messenger to um, 
to actually either come to this this for these forums or try to walk through one of our staff with uh, on the survey, right? Because sometimes, even in those settings, um, parents aren't always comfortable, predominantly English speaking. Mm -hmm. um, meetings to share their ideas. So I, I agree with you, Trustee Alcala, to actually find those empowering parents um, to engage them in, that, in, in those conversations. Um, it's interesting about new, new development. I know that we've talked about that. I appreciate this. I just want to remind the public that this is something that was is a board priority. So thank you for doing that. People always ask, is the board driving this? The, we are. And so we went the 5, 10, um, and 15 year, we're, we're year plans, irrespective of what the board will look like in the future. And so I think definitely new school development is on the agenda, but that would require having a really kind of solid grasp on what developments will happen over the course of the next couple decades, right? So hopefully, Correct. yeah, I'm assuming that we will get the demographic data from the city eventually to help plan accordingly. Any other questions about this? Thank you. Thank Any you direction about the final date? No, no, I think that's fine. I think that, that our, our direction was to finish by 2019. I, I don't think we've, we're, we're, we're being strategic. We're being intentional. We're, we're not changing the date you. on you. <laughs> we, we're, 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 we're wanting to be consistent with what we say as a board and our board priorities. So we, we know that we need to get that out sooner rather than later. Thank you. You're welcome. I mean, unless anybody else disagrees, I'd, I'd rather us be consistent with what we have planned. Okay. Moving on to our action items. Oh, one, I, Mr. Montepanitas, you're back up with a list of ratification of contracts under 35,000. I should have looked before I walked <laughs> away. Okay, back up and running. So item 01 is ratification of contracts valued under $35,000. Uh, and <clears throat> attached to this request is a contract summary that details lower value contracts, that's contracts under $35,000 district-wide, each with a short summary. Also attached are the detailed backups, including all attachments of each contract for review both by the board uh, as well as for the public. All external contracts and agreements must come to the board for approval and public inspection. Per Education Code 20111 and 2100 through 2118.3, contracts over $50,000 must come to the board for approval prior to the commencement of work. In order to prevent slowing or stoppage of work, contracts under $50,000 may be approved if they conform with the district required contract language, insurance requirements, and terms. Superintendent or designee can approve contracts for school sites and departments needing to conduct business without interruption or waiting for a successive board meeting on lower value contracts that conform to the district's master contract, including cancellation terms, insurance coverages, et cetera. At the August 2018 board meeting, the board briefly discussed our past threshold of $30,000. So we are below uh, the statutory $50,000 in Washington. Um, and we reinstituting a per, we talked about a number of things. We, we talked about the threshold as well as reinstituting a per diem for travel, consolidating the format of all district vouchers and pay vouchers, which you'll actually see at the next board agenda. Uh, per diem required a board policy change, whereas current, po current policy is silent on which contract value should come to the board before commencing work. Discussion indicated that the statutory $50,000 was too high for a medium-sized district such as Washington Unified and $35,000 was a more comfortable limit. In our commitment to transparency and operating with more efficiency, we bring the board all contracts under the $35,000 threshold that conform to the district's master contract and requirements. The difference is they're on there for ratification because under that threshold, I've reviewed and approved them so that work doesn't stop and then bring them to you for review afterwards. Any questions or comments or about this agenda item? I, I'm just going to say I'm glad we're doing this. Uh, I think there have been concerns with the public about some of the things that uh, get approved. And um, this will give them an opportunity to see everything. So tonight there are only uh, three contracts on the list. This is the format that we'll use so that you can quickly review as well as look as the, at the extended details if you'd like. Uh, this evening's contracts are all standard from our, our special and support services uh, 
so that they directly serve student needs for special education this year. Trustee, you had a comment, Trustee mm -hmm. Kirby Gonzalez? Mm -hmm. um, this language or not, I just want to be clear. If somebody was interested in knowing what vendors we'd approve from outside agencies who are working with, what partners, um, and see those contracts, where would they look? Uh, they would come to the business services department and get them, or they can or go agenda, agenda by agenda and, yeah. and pluck them all out. So we're trying to put them in one place for the lower value ones, and then anything over that threshold, the individual cabinet members, uh, or we call them sponsors internally, present them to you so that they're reviewed individually. If we think it's something that's a little different, so if you recall the VIA contract I brought to you, although it was under the threshold, I thought it was worth, worthy of discussion because it's a different type of business, uh, and I wanted it vetted out in public because it also then gave me some ideas of how to format that contract. So the cabinet still has discretion over if they want it to go individually depending upon the type, but we do want to make sure that they are all out there so that you can review them and that you know all the outside vendors that we're doing work with. Thank you. So sure. just to reiterate, it's very clear for the public, every contract that's approved outside vendors, whoever they may be, is always on our agendas in public. Correct. But so um, I have a question on process today. I know that we have it on action for discussion. Um, I'm not sure if anybody has questions with them. Will it always be an action item or will you perceiving that they will be listed in consent and future agenda items? I, I'm, I'm happy to do it whatever way the board would like to give direction. They typically uh, show up under consent for most school districts. Um, and then if there's, a, so for example, if there was one item that you wanted to talk about that, that perhaps you wanted to pull off, you can still pass the consent item with the exception of one of the listed items if the board does want to discuss. If it's, on the, if it's on this list of low value contracts, so notice this evening all three are from the special services department. Um, so I have reviewed them thoroughly, so I can certainly answer questions, but they are also still sponsored by a cabinet member. So if you have any questions about the nature of the work or the why, uh, then, then both that cabinet member as well as myself can, can address those or try to address those for you. And of course, we can always, if you have a, a question, go back that we don't have an answer to and find it out for you. I think just um, for the purpose of this conversation, we will, I mean, unless anybody else has comments about it, consent might make sense. I think when mm -hmm. um, I, the president or and whoever is on rotation that week to just see the list um, versus just like, this is a ratification of 35,000 may help the decision as to whether or not it should be pulled on an action item versus a consent item okay. for future reference. Certainly. Unless somebody has a preference to always make it an action item or a consent I, item. I, I, think, I think for efficiency, you have to have it. Yeah. As a routine item, I think it's I think having it on consent and then um, flag the ones that are unique, like VIA. Mm -hmm. But as we know, as a board, we can always pull an item and put it on to action right. um, individually. And um, but I think that the standard pieces for efficiency should be on consent. And everything over thirty five thousand is going to be on action anyway. So yep, right. you know this is consent makes the most sense. Okay. Well, I think. Um, it, it, it makes sense, provided that, that for me, provided that when uh, the item comes up as consent, that the contracts are listed, so we know what contracts are being approved. Because mm -hmm. personally, yeah. I actually have I take issue with just blanketly yeah. approving something on consent without you know, exactly knowing exactly what it is that I'm being asked to approve. So, um, I mean, so if, if we if we can do that, I'm perfectly fine with having to go to consent as long as the contracts that we're being asked to approve on consent are there um, so that we can see them and so mm -hmm. then also so that it can be seen by the public in case there's any questions that come up on that end as well. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Great. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you for the explanation. So Certainly. Um, I know that there's been a lot of so discussion and scrutiny. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> discussion and scrutiny around it. So I appreciate you at this board meeting to explain our process. Sure. Um, okay, so Vice President Pisati moves. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you for ratifying to that comment. Uh, Ms. Norma Gonzalez, welcome. Sorry, I That's okay, because <laughs> we're trying to get to 730, right? Right. <laughs> um, approval of job description. Good evening, uh, President Wong, trustees, um, cabinet, and community members. Um, on January 24th of this year, 2019, um, the uh, board took action to reduce or eliminate two positions within human resources. Uh, one of them was replaced. I'll men mention which two. It's the director of human resources and also the manager of risk management. I'm sorry, risk benefits manager. 
And um, one of those positions was reclassified and became part of the CSCA um, membership. And during that process, um, it left basically one um, person, AKA me, um, and as part of the management team in HR. And basically, um, the, it leaves a void with regard to support for um, the purposes of conducting work, basic workplace investigations, um, conduct interactive process meetings, um, and also to evaluate and supervise staff within the div division and human resources. So with that, um, we come before you to bring a job description that would modify an existing position, which is the confidential certificated HR analyst position, and upgrade or reclassify that position to become an HR manager. Um, and in essence, that individual will be able to assist with those essential functions that are typical in, in human resources. And um, the changes are noted um, as attached in the board packet. And the, um, it's not an addition of an FTE. There will be no backfilling. It basically keeps the um, FTE consistent with the promotion or reclassification of that individual. And that cost um, would be a little under $10,000 annually. Do uh, Trustee Alcala? Uh, yes, I just want to make a uh -huh. comment. I think this is a position that's really needed, especially with the grants. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been after that for a long time now, so I'm really happy. Real um, quickly, this is a uh, person that's already in that position. We're just, uh, is it a promotional classification, reclassification? It is. Okay. Yeah. From a confidential employee to management, a manager okay. in, in human resources. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion or questions? No, if not, do I have a motion? So move. Do I have a second? second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Congratulations you. to whoever Thank you. got promoted. Thank you. Um, continue on to the job description that we are revising. Another job description come before you, um, which is that of the Director of Compliance and Accountability. Um, that position, uh, for, uh, apologize that it came to you in black and white um, over the posting, but we did present the one that had the modified changes, which is in red. And in essence, this position um, will encompass more than the previous position in that it'll cover or support, oversee and support any and all grants and grant funding streams, stream and timelines um, would that pertain to um, any type of grants within the district. And then also oversee and support all adult education and it's listed. You can see all of the red markings. Um, this is um, of interest because it's not an addition to an FTE in the sense that it is already in the budget. It's not an increase um, to the existing budget. It was considered at that time, but it was um, due to the restructuring. And now that that restructuring or the reorganization has occurred, we're bringing the job description back with the uh, revisions as noted. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Sounds good. Okay, mm. so no discussion, no questions. Okay, do I have a, Can I just Tr Trustee Kirby Gonzalez? Uh, say that I appreciate the dialogue around this and I think that um, I know that there needed to be some delving in to look at what was needed. Um, and so I'm grateful for those conversations and um, I think it, if moving forward we ever need to go into a process like this again, which I hope we do not, um, I hope that those positions that are there and open are right there at the top so we can all see them and, and we understand the process of what's happening and what is sort of a placeholder to see where the need is um, as it's coming. And uh, so again, hopefully we'll never be there again, but thank you. Um, and so am I also to understand that this is also a position that somebody also currently occupies or potentially Maybe. There's no, there is not an oh, incumbent in this position. Okay. No. Gotcha. So we will recruit, post and recruit. Oh, post and recruit. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know it was a, a topic of discussion about how we will be in compliance with everything, and that's uh, we like to stay legal here. Yes. And within budget. So I appreciate that. Um, do I have any a motion? If we, we have no questions or discussion. Okay, can you take a slide? So moved. Like. I have a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You have your job description. Thank Good you. Good luck. Thank you very much. And um, the last item for you is the contract between the U UC, um, Davis Campus School of Education, and um, WSD for 
Our so teachers. as is typical for and to support our student teachers and interns and such, um, the district is um, looking and seeking to continue a partnership with the University of California um, of its Davis Campus School of Education. And basically it's a uh, program, of course, to support our um, student teachers. Um, so. Okay. I, it's a to me, it's, it's a standard, standard, yeah. it's a standard it, it, yeah. agreement. So unless there's something, Trustee Kirby Gonzalez, that you caught? No, it is standard, but we've also had this come about this time as standard is um, our partnership with Sac State That's as well. Standard, and right. I'm just, um, I guess, checking for clarification if we're still hosting, um, they're now called cooperating teachers from both universities. I don't know if you have that answer or not, or can get I back to us. I don't right off, but okay. I will get that for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do we have any discussion? A motion have a to motion? approve. Have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You have your agreement. Thank you very Congratulations. much. Congratulations. And this is a new contract that uh, approval of the contract of service with Transformative Justice and Education Center at UC Davis and Washington Unified. Superintendent Luna, and I know this is something that I, as well as Trustee um, Jackson, brought up. So, Thank you, President it. Wong, Board of Trustees, staff, and guests. Um, this, the staff is requesting approval of contracted services with the Transformative the Transformative Justice and Education Center, which is part of UC Davis. Under the goals of the LCAP, our local control accountability plan, and meeting the needs of staff, students, and families under the lens of equity, the district is requesting approval to partner with this particular education center to achieve a positive culture and climate for the district, to support using restorative justice as tools to taking pedagogical stances that promote equity and inclusion, to assist the district with restorative justice tools for students, for teachers and administrators to create critical vocabulary to talk about race, class, and privilege, to support the district's efforts in restorative justice processes that create an approach for sustaining and promoting positive relationships to better serve our students and families, our neighboring university, UC Davis, has this center as partnership with the School of Education. The co-directors, Drs. Tori and Maisha Wynn, have been in conversation with me as the superintendent in potential work and support in facilitating the work of restorative practices and building meaningful relationships with students, parents, and the community to further our work in raising student achievement. This particular education center serves practitioners and researchers in addressing racial inequities, social justices in education, and creating restorative, humanizing, justice-seeking teaching and learning communities. It's not that that's not what's happening. It's just to help and support and facilitate even deeper conversations. The center works with many school districts across the nation. Just to name three, they're currently working with St. Paul Public Schools in Minnesota. They're also um, in Orange County with the California School Discipline Design Team, and they are also working locally here with the Thomas Unified School District. The attachments show that this is a two-year journey beginning in September 2019 and ending in May 2021. These particular uh, parts of the contract include observations of schools and meetings, conversations with focus groups, community building training, restorative justice discourse training, coaching from the winds directly of the implementation from the training. There are four phases to this work, which is why it's a two-year plan. The first phase is for September through December of 2019 for the WINS and their team to have school visitations, to participate um, with focus groups, and also observe board meetings. Phase two has to do with community building with school leaders in which school leaders um, and different groups will be trained for the entire 2019-2020 school year. It is not a blanket-wide uh, district training. They are doing uh, small group trainings as you see in the contract cohorts of 20 at a time, so that those two days are very intimate in terms of uh, delving deep in the lens of equity and being able then to facilitate conversations further with more staff in our district. Phase three has to do with next school year, September through May 
of 2020-2021, which has to do with racial discourse training. Phase four is the implementation design, which particularly in the months of January through May of 2020-2021 is when the guidance and the coaching will occur of the trainings that have been received that we are able to have guidance while we enter this journey so that then they can wean themselves away. The total cost that is projected at this time is $46,200 for these services and all the trainings. That's for uh, the cost to UC Davis. There will be additional costs to the district, such as if the training is done outside of the school day, then we will be paying our teachers. If it's done during the school day, we might need substitutes when we do administrative training, et cetera. We will also um, meet their expectations in these trainings that they are professional trainings. Therefore, we will provide uh, refreshments and also academic resources such as the books for book studies and also the copies. So there, there will be uh, minor uh, costs under our professional development budget to support uh, the work of this two-year project. The WINS um, wished they could have been here tonight, but they are currently working with another school district and um, they are scheduled to be um, either at the next board meeting or a board meeting in September so that you can uh, meet who they are and that they can delve a little bit more into uh, their program itself. Great. Vice President Pizzotti. Yeah, I, I was just wondering, you, you mentioned the, the trainings and, and um, the WINS will be doing trainings of site leaders and, and school leaders. Would it be possible for the board members to attend those trainings so we can see what it is that's going to be um, taught to our to our leaders in our in our school sites? Yeah, thank you for that question. So the when in our many conversations that we've had, the original contract was to do three cohorts of twenty, uh, which are school representations. So it could be classified staff, it could be certificated, it could be the administration. We are going to make sure that all administration is trained in this first, and then we want to also collaborate with classified and certificated staff to join the different cohorts so that we are, we're, we're um, heterogeneous in that manner. So in terms of uh, the board, I requested for them to amend the contract before bringing it here tonight. So they have already amended it to include another cohort. The first cohort of training will be offered to the board and the oh, cabinet good. together. Thank you. And that will be the first cohort of training so that we understand what will be happening mm -hmm. as we roll it out in the next two years. Excellent. Great, thank you. Trustee Kirby-Gonzalez, Trustee Alcala, and then Trustee Jackson. Okay, that order. Trustee Kirby-Gonzalez. Okay. Um, thank you, and I appreciated hearing what you had to say. That was on my list was to make sure that this was uh, that this falls onto everyone in our culture, our classified, certificated, and everyone here, um, because our students deserve to be in an environment where there is an equity-focused mindset. Um, and I appreciate the hard conversations. They're hard, uncomfortable yeah. conversations. <laughs> uh, <laughs> President Wong and I are going to be spending, um, we spent all last year in our equity network with CSBA and we'll be meeting again. Um, it's exciting, they're entering a new cohort that we'll be meeting on Friday night and then Saturday. Uh, this Saturday we'll be continuing that work and also having them come in as well to work with us. Um, and I am proud to work on a board uh, that is committed and ask questions like, mm -hmm. how can the board come and visit this to support that work? Um, and the only um, statement then that um, I want to make is uh, there was a comment or in here about how uh, this work really helps to raise um, student achievement. And I wanna make it clear from my perspective that that is uh, not my goal. That may be a byproduct, but my goal mm -hmm. is really um, strong citizens in a great environment for our kids. And that may be a byproduct, but um, it's certainly not uh, the, the language of, of the why for me. Thank you very much, I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Trustee Alcala. I had a question. Um, so it, will this be included as the professional development that we have every year? 
Uh, this is a different professional a different, development okay. because we do have different layers of professional development. So in our uh, WSTA contract, there's specific language about how teachers receive professional development on certain days. We have our Wednesdays every hour of our professional learning time. Our classified staff, we had that in negotiations as well, that uh, money has been set aside each year for their professional development and trainings. Administration also has money set aside for their professional development because everybody receives a different layer of, of, of professional learning. This um, it was in our LCAP that the board approved in June. It was part, uh, under the lens of school climate and culture. Um, and so this 40, we projected $50,000 um, in the LCAP. So we'll, we'll, uh, over the course of the two years, it will probably be more than 50,000. So next year's, this year's LCAP, we, it will have to show the uh, slight increase of cost to the district in terms of providing the academic books and the resources that uh, support the training. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of something new, it is new even though I've, I have sung over and over again, nothing new, we knew that this was coming and it's not going across the district. So um, it's, it's a very small group, about 80 people, including the board of the 80, that will start this two-day training over the course of two years. Oh, I, I think this is excellent, yeah. very supportive. Thank you. Trustee Jackson. I am, um, needless to say, I'm extremely excited. Uh, to have this program finally being out rolled out um, in throughout the in the district, um, I think um, the cost the fifty thousand whatever it would ultimately end up costing us is going to pay off in spades, oh, yes. um, in many more ways than we can ever imagine. Because when you have a district like ours, that is as ethnically diverse and ethnically rich um, as, 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 as this district is, it's important that we have that conversation to address some of those tough questions that obviously are gonna come up uh, during, during this process. Right. And so I'm extremely excited and look very much look forward to um, participating uh, in this process with the WINS and um, I think the community will be extremely uh, proud of the results that they see once this thing really starts to be implemented. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I know that I've been saying it for a long time, and I know that we've um, I, I, we've been patient because we've been in the middle of change. So really, I think a lot of us um, have are really excited to kind of be on this journey with the district. Right, because it is a journey and it's a process. And I looked at Sarah earlier, it's like, it's, it was a process for through CSBA. And it, we're, you know, um, we wish we could have shared that with the entire board. Um, and so I, I think it's a, a good investment. One comment I do have is I do appreciate that you have teacher stipends, but I would also consider maybe if classified are taking time off to do oh, this. Oh, yes, that you, most okay. definitely. Okay. Yes, so thank I you. That, that's a point of clarification for yes, me. Yes, thank you for um, that. That classified also, Absolutely. if they're participating in this, to, there, there's parity and equity in, in providing a stipend, additional stipend for that. You bet. Um, and thank you. Thank you for meeting with the doctors win. And um, again, you know, we, we have put things out there, but we do want to also trust the cabinet and board and staff to make their own decisions. So I just want to, um, yeah, we're excited about it. And so um, do I have a motion or any other comments or so, questions? Oh, I was going to say I moved. Second. second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, okay, trustees. Thank you. All right, so um, board governments, quarterly board policy and administrative regulations um, updates for 5,000, 6,000 series. I can start with, I appreciate the summary. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yeah. and you're welcome. <laughs> um, good evening, uh, President Wong, Board of Trustees, Cabinet, and Community. Tonight I bring to you the July updates uh, from CSBA. There are five, or I'm sorry, there are six um, policy and regulations to be updated. Uh, the first one is BP and AR 5136. It deals with gangs. And um, I've also had Dr. Phillips review uh, this policy as well. And it basically um, clarifies some language as well as um, puts a new resource in there from the National Gang Center and a publication from the LA Police Department. 
Um, so it's basically reflects the best practices for gang prevention, intervention, and suppression. Um, the second one is BPAR 6142.2, which is world language instruction that um, we have been calling foreign language um, classes. It is actually called world language now per the law um, from AB 2319 um, in 2018. So it basically reflects of the new um, world language um, content standards and um, the policies as recommended by the UC system. And the third one is athletic competition. And that is because of a new law, SB 1109 in 2019, which basically mandates the district um, annually provide student athletes and their parent guardians with an op opioid uh, fact sheet. Uh, the next one is BPAR 6145.6, which is international exchange, and it basically reflects CSBA's legal guidance on the scope of the policies, how we deal with um, our international students that come to us, as well as if our students want to um, go abroad to do international study. The um, fifth one is BPAR 6174 that deals with the education for English learners. And this has also been reviewed by our coordinator of English learners, uh, Stacy Tran. And it basically reflects um, the new law AB 2735 in 2018 that basically says we cannot deny core academics to any EL student in order to graduate from high school, be promoted from middle school, etc. And I'm really glad this law um, came about because of um, EL education is, is a core academic now. And so um, we got to make sure that there's enough um, room in their schedules to make sure that they do graduate from high school and they are promoted onto high school. So I appreciate that new law. And the last one is BP 6179, which has to do with supplemental instruction, which basically um, deals with the remedial instruction to students who are recommended for retention or are identified as being high risk for retention. But I think more importantly, it deletes um, any comment around program improvement, which was done under Title I, and we no longer have program improvement in public education. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Because <laughs> there's no more NCLB. Absolutely. <laughs> so <Do> I, I, <laughs> right. <laughs> so I ask the board for consideration. Um, any questions? There's a, there are a lot of updates. So mm -hmm. Vice President Pizzotti, Trustee Kirby Gonzalez, Trustee Alcala, or is that order? No? Yeah. Vice President Pizzotti. Mine, I'm just going to quickly say, because athletics is always on my mind, but yes. um, this was a great law, and I really do appreciate um, um, that we're incorporating it, and uh, I, I have flashbacks to the days in, in high school when our locker room had, you know, Vicodin swirling around it like it was nobody's Opioids. business. So, uh, it, yeah, and it wasn't from the coaches. Yeah, this was back in the 80s. We had, what's, what's cool? we had stuff like that. What's cool? Were you in the Bay Area? <laughs> so, Bay Area. Yeah, us Bay Area kids. So, yeah, and, and it, They you clearly know, weren't Olympians. Truly not. <laughs> truly not. But it, it was something that, I, you know, it was pretty commonplace. And I'm glad that we're now taking, uh, you know, at this young age, we're making kids aware of how dangerous it is. Wow. Absolutely. And so I do appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, no questions about the standard updates? Uh, Let's take Kirby Gonzalez. Um, I just have a quick um, piece. When looking, um, so when people go online and look at the updates, including ourselves, the summary, will this then be, can we expect this posted by the end of next week or on online where we have maybe the week after? <laughs> it is a process that I work <laughs> I with. I know it takes time. With the I, superintendent's office. Do to um, work with CSBA and to make sure it is incorporated into our PDFs online. Yeah. Um, okay. so we oh, that's because it does have to go all the way into the PDF. So we Let do it as quickly PDF. as possible. And I also try to make all the, obviously all the principals aware and the directors aware of the policy updates. Sure. So Maybe we'll in the that. meantime, a link that says update. I don't know. I'm trying to think through that. 
Um, okay. I mean, the okay. long PDF is challenging. I mean, yeah, I understand. It's I a understand. logistical thing from, I, I've been trying to search it because I use our board policies to teach my, Me too, my, my and students, it, and it's, it, it it's, takes, it's hard. It's, it's cumbersome. And it's so you are, you are aware um, Educational Services has started the project of um, creating tables of contents and making it more easy that would be, and accessible to the board and to the community. That would That'll be, be great. I know it's, it, it's labor intensive, but it is one long yeah. PDF that's very challenging. To Absolutely. Very um, challenging. I know these usually go used to go through the policy committee that we never dissolved. So is that ever going to come back again? Yes. Okay. I was actually waiting for. Um, I know I said yes. So I'm, I'm, looking the, at the I'm the chair of it, and then Trustee Jackson is on it, and so uh, I, I would love for that to um, yeah, yes. be implemented again. So just for point of clarification, on on, on process that you know there's a there, there's another process before it comes to board. I just I, we've been kind of lax on it. So um, hmm. I do have just, one question. I'm sorry. Yes, Trustee Alcala. I, I just read here and I. The site coordinator to oversee the administration of English language proficiency. Do we currently have someone in, or does it have to be a created position? No, we do, and that is Stacy Tran, okay. our coordinator. So we already have a coordinator who takes care of all the testing as well as our Title III funding and reporting. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. It wasn't an indictment, it was just a question that I think. <clears throat> no, I, I know think, that Trustee Jackson would love to be on that, <laughs> uh, love to meet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Frequently and, often. Frequently and often, he says. Okay. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You have your updates. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Now we're moving on to board and superintendent comments. Trustee Alcala, are you? Oh, okay. Thank ready? you. Um, I just have to report that we had a great time um, going mm -hmm. on National Night Out. Um, I think all the board. Yes, we yes. were all there. And um, some of the board members brought their children. I brought my granddaughter. We had a wonderful time. Um, we, I believe, visited four places, you know, and um, it was great because we handed out pencils and um, we got a lot of feedback from the community. It was really great um, to be out there and hearing what parents had to say. We ran into a lot of students out there. And um, we also provided them with um, information resources for things like uh, uniforms and places to go if you know families are struggling um, with things that they need to get their children off to um, to a good school year. So it was a lot of fun. And then my granddaughter Aurora's in her sophomore year at River City, and she was helping with the freshman orientation. And um, I met some uh, freshman uh, who is the son of a friend of mine, Cecilia Cornejo. And uh, he was really excited. He says, wow, now I'm with the big, big kids. And I said, well, you're one of the big kids. So there was a lot of enthusiasm over at the, um, at the River City campus. And that's it. Great. Mm -hmm. Trustee Kirby Gonzalez. Um, OK, I want to echo the statement of National Night Out in terms of hearing the stories from families that we don't always talk to or theater school sites. Um, and what a special opportunity that is. And um, when I said, you have questions, concerns, things to share, uh, there was a lot of, oh, well, let me tell you what's going well, which was really nice. And um, hearing from families, as we know, our population has gone up of, of our students who speak Farsi and, um, and connecting with some of the families there who, um, it was really nice to hear from them how they felt supported. And then when there are concerns, they know who to come to and, and how to get that help and access it. So um, I appreciate it. Just that little glimmer um, into some lives that we don't always hear from. And uh, I the, uh, the board agenda right now, when you go, uh, if the community is looking at when to come to a board meeting, it still says, um, which I understand because we just made the change and there's a lot going on, um, the board meetings start at 6 o'clock. So just as an update that on our uh, board website that there is a PDF of our board schedule and if a uh, little change can be made, the, the noting the time change for this school year would be great. Um, and then my daughter, Chloe, who's five, um, said to me, Mommy, can I put on my school uniform and practice being a kindergartner? <laughs> and she was very excited. And our neighbor came over and pretended to be her teacher. And, um, and then she wore her uniform dress again today. Um, so she's really thrilled. 
And uh, I know that transitions are hard. Getting up early can be hard. Uh, eating food at certain times of day for adults and children when we're used to maybe not is hard. Using the restroom at certain times is hard. Um, so <laughs> if we give everyone, our students, um, each other, our colleagues, some grace as we transition back in. Um, but we have a lot of students who are counting on us, who are thrilled, who are practicing for school, who are missing school, who are missing the consistency of school, um, who feel like school is a safe place for them. It's a place where they can connect with people that care about them and remembering how, um, how they depend on us. And as we do that and check in and care about our kids when they come to see us, checking in to care about our colleagues too, because this is a job where you can easily uh, be overwhelmed in your classroom, in your office, whatever position you do in our school district. And uh, so checking on one another and um, giving one another grace. And um, it's a really exciting time, but I know it can be an overwhelming time too. So thank you to all the 12-year employees that have been working around the clock to get schools ready. And thank you to everyone who has been putting their time in to have a really great school year. I can't wait to start visiting school sites. Clerk Jackson. Uh, I'll echo uh, the comments already made about the National Night Out. That was um, an experience. It's a lot of fun getting out and meeting people in the different neighborhoods uh, in our community and um, getting to uh, interact with them. And then also today I had the, uh, I was able to attend the um, new employee orientation this morning, which was, it was nice to see all the, the new faces and of, of the te new teachers that are coming into the district. Um, I could tell that a lot of them were kind of worried of what they, about what they may have gotten themselves into. Uh, but from- You were there as a first year I, teacher. No. Huh. <laughs> okay. Well, see, I was different. You remember, I, I subbed for nine years before I finally started teaching full time. So for me, my first year wasn't exactly my first year. But that uh, being said, it was not, the, I think the, for what I was able to see um, this morning, the, the, I'll just put it this way. You guys did a fantastic, absolutely amazing job of having that whole thing set up. Um, the way they were, everyone there was walked through the process of how to how to get their log on and get them getting everyone logged in onto their computers. And the the fact that there was actually they even had computers there for a lot of the teachers on on site for them to pick up right there on 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 the spot was just. It was absolutely nothing like the orientation that I got my first year. <laughs> Seriously, it was absolutely top, that was top notch. I was thoroughly impressed by um, by what I saw this morning. And um, if I were a new teacher coming into this district, I, I, I w it would have put gave me a little bit more confidence going into my first week, um, first days of school next week, um, just by going through that orientation because you know everything was kind of they're pretty much their hand walk through everything that they needed to do in order to, and to be successful the first few days of the school year. Um, and I'm sure that they'll get the support that they need because as, as anyone who's done this work, which a lot of us have, you, you know that, that first, the first year or two, it's, it's challenging. You, know, you'll, you're, you doubt your worth, <laughs> you doubt your abilities, you, 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 you doubt and you question Things on a daily basis sometimes, um, it, because I mean this is this can be quite possibly some one of the most frustrating, uh, unappreciative um, professions in the world. But at the same time, it can also be one of the most rewarding and uh, impactful professions in the world. And hopefully, and I, I'm sure that our, our, our new teachers will get the support that they need to help them navigate uh, themselves as they go through that, that discovery process. Um, so I'm also looking forward to the school year starting, not necessarily next week. Uh, wouldn't bother me if we still had another week or two before we start actually started school in this district, but that's for another day. Um, oh, <laughs> making my daughter's heart. <laughs> Uh, but um, but I, I think everyone the, the my, the, the, the excitement is building in my house um, as well with my kids. Then they're looking forward to the start of the school year. Excellent, Vice President Pizzotti. 
Yeah, I'm, I'll echo the comments of everybody here about National Night Out. It's one of the best nights of the year because not only you know do we get to meet and interact with the community, we get to see you know the police officers, SAC probation, the firefighters, Yolo DA. Yolo DA, that's right, and the city council as well as all of us, all the elected officials are all there and they're they're you know reaching out to the community and they're interacting with the community and and just kind of you know being uh, you know uh, kind of a cohesive unit and, and learning a, about what's going on in the community and showing that we're there for them and, and we want to hear from them and you know it, it's just one of one of the better events and, and it shows that you know you don't have to be afraid of the police you don't have to be afraid of the probation you don't have to be afraid of the DA right this is an opportunity for them to get out and say look we're gonna have fun we're gonna throw balls in the dunk tank you know that was one of the stops they had a dunk tank and that was awesome and maybe it I think Superintendent Luna mentioned that, uh, you know, there should be a prize. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 don't, don't remove um, So anyway. I, Vice I, President Pizzotti. <laughs> hey, I volunteer. I'll be in the dunk tank. I have no problem. Um, but I really do enjoy that. And so um, I, I just wanted to share that experience to me is always a great one. I really have enjoyed it since the first time I got on the board. Um, let's see. Um, oh, the the two by two, um, I, I'm sorry, I do apologize. I was a little late. I had to pick up my daughter from camp on that. So I was about seven minutes late to the start of, of the two by two committee. Um, so in the two by two, we did talk about the grants for or that were applied for by the the city. There's three sites. Two of them are our site, uh, our properties, um, the parks on our properties, uh, West Acre and Fallbrook. Um, <clears throat> uh, I believe Trustee Wong asked, or President Wong asked, you know, which would be the site of ours that has the greatest likelihood of being um, being selected. And I think it, it, Chris said that it's probably Fallbrook because it would be a new development or a remodel. Is that what it was? Was it West Acre? Okay, sorry, I got them max, mixed up. West Acre, because it would be a, a new development, right? So um, anyway, I, I think if you want to correct me, that's fine. Um, the, 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 both are equally um, particular, you know, thoughtfully by both teams. The more competitive right. grant is West Acre. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, so anyway, the the the, um, the information I think was very helpful in terms of the um, you know the bathroom issue. I, I think that was something that was. Um, discussed uh, with the community and since they're requested by the it, it was actually a request of the community right so um, anyway that was just to answer the question and uh, uh, you know just to let you know that that was something uh, that was uh, at the behest of the community so um, anyway um, let's see the only other thing that I'd like to briefly mention and and welcome to all the new teachers and classified classified staff um, I, I, we do appreciate you uh, um, you know coming on board and and embarking on this you know journey with us throughout the school year and, and our family and I will say this my daughter is absolutely going out of her mind to get back into the classroom she absolutely loves going to school she's even you know at a YMCA summer camp with a lot of the friends that she knows but at the same time she still wants to be at her school site with her friends and learning from her teachers. And she's constantly asking me, who's my teacher gonna be? Who's my teacher gonna be? She wants to know, she's dying to know. So, you know, when you look at it from a kid's perspective, this is their life, you know, it's a large portion of their day and they really get involved and they love their teachers and they love going to school. So I'd say that. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to make 
a quick comment that, you know, we are seeing far too many tragedies spawned by hate, you know? And I'm so sick and I'm so tired of all the rhetoric and I'm so sad of hearing, it, it just makes me, you know, so furious when I hear elected officials say we're sending prayers and condolences to the families of those, you know, slain by gun violence when they're the ones that have the power to actually do something about it. I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, stop and actually do your jobs. And that's kind of my last little comment because I'm over it. I just cannot stand seeing another, you know, family destroyed because of hate. Right. Um, I have a process question for staff. We do have a 7.30 special session. Do we continue on with our comments? Uh, yes, you're, you're able to do that. We put a 7.30 time mm -hmm. to be on the earlier side. You can always begin the special closed session later. Okay. Um, we just want to make sure that uh, it's not before the 7.30 time. Perfect. Okay. Um, so I, National Night Out was a good reminder of our small little community and, again, the richness of diversity of voices. Um, I keep just sitting on a conversation that I know that, that Vice President Rosati and Clerk Jackson and I were part of, and I, I'm not trying to out this person, but this family, but... Um, it's a school's a safe place not just for our kids but for our parents and I'm gonna I'm gonna cry <laughs> I'm gonna cry um, because we were shared a story by a family who I think we all knew uh, had probably helped out who was homeless for quite some time at a school um, in the north side and the um, the parents volunteered but you know on the face of it you wouldn't have known there's nothing that you can you you know that somebody's homeless but this person, these, this parent, these parents were dedicated to their kids and their learning, right? And um, what they shared was that they, where we were at was the first time they were housed. There's a connection of our staff and the city staff and the teachers. Um, but I think what, was, what, what resonated with me was school was not just safe for their students, but was safe for them, the parent. Right, and, and they were welcoming, and I think that was, um, for me, even, I mean, there were lots of beauty throughout um, the night with law enforcement, all of that, but it was, uh, it was just kind of the symbolism of how the district and the city and law enforcement work together to help families on the daily, and that's what's so special about West Sacramento. Um, and as I said in graduation, we, we um, love like family, we fight like family, we make up. But at the end of the day, if you're a West Sacramentan, go Raiders. <laughs> Not Vikings. Um, and um, that was it, was, it was just really, it was a good reminder of our heart work. And um, I think education generally, no matter where you're at, it's such a helping profession. And people forget that that that's why we all here are, uh, sit on this board. This is why people show up every day. They work the long hours. Um, and, you know, I, I, I appreciate that. And it was just a really fabulous way to actually, it was at the beginning of National Night Out, and that just really sat, sat with me, right? Um, that not only are, do our kids come with a lot of things that are happening at home, but their parents are coming with us. And, and we don't, you know, we need to be sensitive to that trauma-informed, that diversity, that, the bias that we might be holding about what that might mean, um, because we have the opportunity to change lives and community because of it. And so that was, uh, that was amazing. I apologize that I came to the two-by-two two extremely late, um, but I appreciate just hearing everything that, um, that we're trying to do to kind of build safer, uh, safer parks and community with the city. I know that, I understand that um, the likelihood is that we are likely to get only one, not both, and so the more competitive one will likely be West Acre and um, a number of things. And so we will, you know, we'll, we'll see where that lands, but I appreciate kind of seeing the overview, the process that they went through in terms of engaging the community for their, their parks process and understanding that um, 
can I say elderly? I'm not trying to, the, the bathrooms were there because the elderly had, um, and it never occurred to me because we think about kids, but the, that they came out and it is their community, it is our community together. And that that was a voice that was like, no, we're doing, putting bathrooms because it just, you know, the, the elderly said if we're walking, we'd like a bathroom. So, um, okay, and that, I think that's it. And I'm looking forward to continuing our CSB equity. Um, meetings this week, and we were handing it over to Superintendent Luna before we head into our second board meeting. Closed session. Thank you, President Wong and Board of Trustees. I just have a, a brief update as there have been quite a few things going on in our district, and we, we really need to celebrate um, some things. So, I'll begin first with our backpack giveaway day, which always happens before school starts. And we, we advertise, even though we are not the one hosting it, though we do a lot of the labor of it, because we're in partnership with Yellow County Children's Alliance. And it's all of our students that benefit from this giveaway. Each year that I have attended this backpack giveaway, it's bigger and bigger bigger and uh, the lines get longer and longer and it's now just a part of getting ready to go back to school. It's just a normal annual thing that we do in our families. We had a lot of community sponsors serving our families. So if you were a family and you brought your children and you went through this backpack giveaway day, you basically had the following um, services. First, you received um, a bag of food. You had a backpack um, for every student with uh, school resources and supplies. You could go to this um, uh, Elica Health Center and receive some health services right there while your kids are out playing. Um, our other community partners, there were so many that I couldn't really list them all. They had f fun activities for kids to do while the parents were taking care of paperwork and and or going to the health center. It was pretty amazing. I was pretty taken back this year. So here's our team. Um, we do work with the Yolo County Children's Alliance and always getting resources to our students, but I have to shout out our student services department. They are the ones, they're not even on board yet for their official start of school. And they're the ones that are serving our families in the heat and preparing days and days in advance, getting the word out to all of our families. And one of the beauty, one of the most beautiful things when a family enters this backpack giveaway, they get to see the faces that they know, and that's our student services staff. So big shout out to our student services department, and we thank the Yolo County Children's Alliance for all that they give to our students, and there were 800 backpacks given away, 800. We also wanted to let you know that um, our students have been working hard, even though school isn't in session. At the end of July, there was a two-week band camp, and as a former band mom, getting up at three o'clock in the morning on Saturdays to go to band reviews, um, it's a very, very rigorous program. The kids are sweating it out during the day, preparing to sweat it out during drum, drum line and band competitions. So you see there our uh, band teacher. So it's not just about playing their instruments. They go through physical and skill development. Um, they also are marching out in the field. And if you've never been in a marching band, it's not as easy as what it looks like to be in the straight line being on the right foot and playing your instrument while reading music and hearing your band teacher yell at you all at the same time. <laughs> um, on the right hand side, you see that the students were also broken into groups and this is what we call um, sectionals where students lead their rehearsals um, in these small groups. Um, and then they also did another level. They brought in future River City Regiment members. So they connected um, some of the junior high kids, middle school kids, 
into future regiment of, of River City. So we're trying to align and just keep growing into each other's program. So a big shout out, of course, to our music boosters, our parents. That's people like Christy Jordan, who was the former president, and now Jen Grexkin. So these are the two people who have come to the board to advocate for the Performing Arts Center because they're so passionate about making sure our kids have what they need to have uh, such wonderful programs. Another layer. The band camp kids took time to do service. Mm -hmm. They filled all of the food bags for the backpack giveaway day as part of their band camp. So we're just trying to align and teach kids, yes, this camp was about you, this camp was about training you to prepare for fun programs, football games, and all that good stuff. But let's always remember there's always a bigger picture than ourselves. And so kudos to the band kids and the band boosters for teaching our kids about service. National Night Out was a lot of fun, and I learned a lot um, going out to the different areas of the city. Um, by the way, just for the for the board to know, all the parent concerns we did, are, we've already been working on them, okay? <laughs> but that's the beauty of National Night Out, is to be able to hear from the parents directly and then meet the neighbors, right? Meet the neighbors. So um, we went into different neighborhoods, and this is one neighborhood that was technically not on our stop, just for clarification there. <laughs> but we had a great time of meeting a lot McKinney. of our families. Um, also wanted to say McKinney. that we had a lot of community partners, so lot, lots of different divisions of law enforcement. So what I loved about National Night Out is that a corrections officer comes to me and says, are you Miss Luna? And then I say, yes, I am. And he goes, well, you were my fourth grade teacher, and I'm 40 years old now. <laughs> so that means that, yes, I've been, I've been in education for over 30 years, because 30 years ago, he was in fourth grade. So that being said, you do get to meet a lot of people, mm -hmm. and our law enforcement divisions are very, very good partners with us. I also want to give a shout out I'm hoping that my clicker, there it is. Uh, a shout out to Daniel Barajas, who was our bus driver <laughs> and uh, journeyed with us that whole night. Appreciate Daniel uh, taking the time to be with us on that night. Oh, and yeah. of course you have to have fun, right? <laughs> you have to have fun. Also wanna let you know. Um, Who's that guy? Uh, <laughs> all, all of our administrative team worked together for two days, August 1st and 2nd. Um, facilitated by our cabinet and myself in regards to our direction and our focus um, and what about our leadership and about our management because we have to have both. So I want to thank our administrative teams for coming out for these two days of intensive time of really reflecting about last year and also moving into this coming year. So we also have to have fun too. It's pretty competitive because we were talking about team building. So here, um, my clicker's just really slow. Here we have our district office staff. So we have our cabinet. We have our directors, coordinators, and supervisors. And then on our next one, we have our principals and assistant <laughs> principals. And the reason why they're grouped is because each of them was a group in itself. And it's very interesting. Our executive cabinet is quite challenged with just a simple relay of over under. Um, so we had a lot of fun, but we also built a, a lot of teams and had fun. Thank you, uh, Clerk Jackson, for coming this morning to our new educator orientation. If I were a new teacher coming into Washington Unified, it's pretty amazing what we do to welcome new people. And wait until tomorrow, they're gonna be blown away when they get the bus ride and the bus tour. And every time that I put this on my Facebook page about how we welcome our employees, of course then there's jealousy and all that, you know, like Linda, what are you doing? How, this is incredible how we treat our new employees, and it is. These are Washington Unified traditions. These are traditions that make us unique and special. And so, um, Kudos to the new educators, and they will need support, and that's what we're all here for. 
I just uh, wanted to thank our uh, facilities team, which is a whole whopping two people, uh, maybe three people, and that's our CBO, Chris Malpanitas, Angie Nichols, and Terry Souza, who oversee not just our facilities um, that we work on day to day, but also looking into the future and looking outward. So uh, these community meetings um, for our facilities master planning are very intensive. And while they are being facilitated by the, uh, the firm who we have hired to complete this task for us, staff still is attending. And so I want to thank um, Chris, Angie, and uh, Terry for that. Lastly, I just want to remind our parents our first day of school is coming quickly. It's coming next week. And um, so just want to remind everybody, if your students ride the bus, the bus schedules will be updated and ready for everybody to review on Monday. River City's bus schedule is already up and running. Also want to put a plug out for our families to, to remind them that we have added additional um, after school care. And so at five of our, four of our schools, we have the Kids Zone and Champions, and then at, at YMC, for YMCA, we have them at Southport and Bridgeway. So we are looking forward to seeing our families and seeing our students. Just some dates coming up because um, we have a new principal over at River City High School, and she's quickly reminded me the first home game of football is actually August 23rd, but we also have our back-to-school nights for our TK-8 schools on August 21st, and then high schools back-to-school nights are on the 28th. So they're coming quickly, even though we're just starting school. So that's my update, and um, we are so excited for next week to have all of our employees back, and we oh welcome and embrace and love all children coming on Wednesday. Thank you. Superintendent Luna, those, uh, those dates will be provided us in your update? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so moving on to our future board agenda items, we have board policy and parent handbooks. Um, cell phone use and dress code, and then we have the special education and full inclusion programs, MTSS, PBIS programming, and board budget. Anything else we'd like to add to the growing list? I have one that maybe can combine in. So I was thinking about what we approved tonight with the um, agenda, thinking about um, gang identification, and this probably would come from the police department, but um, having an update of what that looks like or means um, from the department in West Sacramento, because I know, for example, our dress code with red hasn't been updated in a long time. Maybe that is very much necessary, but it would be interesting to have the data and know, um, because I don't feel like I do, and so I'd appreciate to hear to hear that in their statistics. And then this could maybe be in a board update, um, but I was surprised to hear. Um, that our Russian speaking uh, at home population uh, was below 4%. And when you pull out the dashboard data, um, you see our second language population, which is 18.2%. You can later see um, different breakdowns of our populations, but there's no way to know um, our, um, how our home, homes look like. There's no way to pull that out. And so I'm wondering, um, I can make some assumptions, but I'm not sure they're right. So if there's a way to have an update of what um, our demographics look like there, that would be great. Thanks. Okay. Anything else for future board agenda items? No, but before um, we adjourn, I, I'm sorry. Oh, Clerk Jackson. Trustee Jackson, or Clerk Jackson. Um, I know we had, um, maybe we can include this with the, um, the full inclusion piece as well, but I would love to get a, um, I guess it would be a status update on how our the summer school program went oh. yeah, yeah, with yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I, from yeah. from what from what I hear, it was an absolutely, mm -hmm. it was a fabulous success, and I think that it would be great to get an update on how that went. Thank you for that. Uh, there will be a presentation at the next board meeting. Perfect. I was just going to say, I, I do want to adjourn in memory of the victims in El Paso and Dayton. Okay. I think we're all good with that. And everywhere else.
that in that week in Galt and in right. Dayton Gil and in right. Gilroy and oh, not Galt, sorry. All those places. All those. Motion so to, to have adjourn. a motion to adjourn in memory of all those um, slain by gun violence this past. Absolutely. Several weeks. Yeah. So moved. Have a second. Second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourned. Okay. Why we're on. 644-33 to tell your senators to pass background checks on gun safety. So again, you can text 644-33. Okay. Here. Trustee Alcala. Here. And I am present. Announcements of